Hi everyone, and welcome to this ordeal, I mean video, review of the top 20 worst films, in my opinion, of the year 2014. Which is pretty shocking because I saw a lot of movies last year, and really I only found 20 movies that I really, really despised and hate a lot. So let's get on with this and I can move on with my life and never, ever, ever talk about these movies ever again. Number 20. Ride Along. Love Ice Cube, but looking forward to Straight Outta Compton. Kevin Hart is a lot of miss, and sometimes he'll hit, but the fact that this movie is getting a sequel makes me sick to myself, and I'm ready to move on. Number 19, Tammy. Big fan of Melissa McCarthy, looking forward to what she has coming in the next few years. Love what she's done in the past, and I would love for her to collaborate with her husband again. But next time, know that you're going to do a drama or a comedy. Don't make a film where you have no idea what you're doing. And don't bring along an Ital a, a extremely talented cast with you. Don't please, ever again. Number 19, Legends of Oz. Don't know if a lot of people saw this movie, and that's a good thing. Keep this away from your children and just show them The Wizard of Oz. Show them The Return to Oz. Even show them that Oz movie from a few years ago, which I didn't like at all. But it's much, much better than this piece of trash animated trash, animated garbage. Number 17, Vampire Academy. Now I know it worked for the boys when it came to Twilight and that was very successful even though it was trash. So why not it working for the girls? Well, it doesn't work at all. The plot is awful, the acting is terrible, and I did not care about any of the characters. And I don't think this is going to become a franchise anytime soon even though I know this is based on a book series and thank goodness for that. Number 16, Ouija. YG does this movie again, G again. Now they're making a sequel, so you can all look forward to that, guys. Thank you, whoever saw that movie as well as me. Oh, damn, I saw it too. Sorry about that. Number 15, Brick Mansions. I'm going to miss Paul Walker. I'm really glad that this is not his last film, even though this was the last finished film that he completed before he died. But I'm really looking forward to... Furious Fast 7, whatever they want to call it, because I really like Paul Walker, and I'm glad he's going to be remembered for this and not Brick Mansions, even though I hear that the original film, which I think is called District B-13, is a great film, and I need to check that out, but you can probably watch that and forget Brick Mansions. Just don't watch it. It's terrible. Number 14. Did you know that there was a film that came out last year that actually had Brittany Murphy in it? Yeah, she finished a few movies before she died, and one of them finally got released. I think this might be the last one to get released. It's a terrible film. It's awful, and she's not very good in it. But I like Brittany Murphy, and I was curious about seeing it, and it's just boring as hell. And it's just sad that she was a part of it. But luckily, she's been in a part of a lot of amazing films that you can check out. And I highly recommend it because Brittany Murphy was a, an amazing talent that I miss to this day. So, shout out to you, Brittany. Miss you. And uh, don't see this movie. Don't see that film. But go see Sin City and, you know, uh, Clueless and 8 Mile. Great stuff. Great stuff. Number 13, Leprechaun Origins. Now, I don't think this movie was called Leprechaun when it was made. I have a feeling that once it came out, they decided just to slap leprechauns on it. Leprechauns. And just call it that because there's not a single leprechaun in this whole film. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking. It's just a knockoff of every monster horror film ever made. And it wasn't scary at all. You get, you get stupid humans and stupid makeup and just an overall stupid, stupid, stupid. Did I say stupid? Stupid. Stupid film. Number 12, The Remaining. Now, I saw a lot of religious films last year, and I don't mind a movie that has uh, religious content in it as long as it doesn't feel preachy or, or over the top or trying to shove some message down people's throats. But with this film, they just tried to make a horror movie, capitalize on the whole idea of the end of the world, and it didn't work at all. I hated this movie, and I would not recommend it on anybody, my Christian friends and my non-Christian friends. Please, do yourself a favor and stay away from the remaining. <laughs> Number 11, The Legend of Hercules. Now, there was two Hercules movies that came out last year. A good one, starring The Rock, which was a lot of fun. Stupid, but a lot of fun. And then The Legend of Hercules, which was sadly directed by Ridley Scott. Not Ridley Scott. What am I talking about? Ridley Scott had nothing to do with this movie. What is his name? 
Rennie Harlan, yes. Rennie Harlan made this movie. Oh my gosh, what a piece of garbage. And he was known for doing Cliffhanger and Die Hard 2. Man, what happened to him? I don't know. Number 10, The Other Woman. Oh, what can you say about The Other Woman? It's just a, it's just a terrible film that puts down women and has nothing to say about relationships or comedy. Cameron Diaz is terrible. Everybody, everybody's just awful in this movie. Women are awful in this film. Men are awful in this film. The people that probably made this film had an awful agenda to them. They're probably not awful in real life. They're probably great and talented people that need to focus our energies on something else. But I don't know why this movie was put together. I don't know. It was just an awful, awful representation of human humanity in general. Don't see the film. Number nine. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, I had some hope for this movie. I tried to look past that. It's got Megan Fox and produced by Michael Bay. I just hope it would be a fun throwback to my childhood. And it wasn't. It was just trying to be Transformers and every other Michael Bay produced film ever made. And I think they did get a representation of the Turtles right. But when it came to the story and the adventure and the special effects, and some of the dialogue and the villain. Oh my gosh, they just destroyed Shredder. Shame on you. And now there's going to be sequels, so yay? No. Number nine, Child of God. This is a film directed by James Franco. And it's maybe a movie that I would say if you're curious enough and you want to see something really disturbing and sick and wrong, check it out. But if you want to lose your soul and maybe do something bad to yourself or humanity, then please stay away from this movie because it is just the sick things that happen in this film that nobody should witness. So scratch all I said, just stay away from this film and hope, pray that whatever James Franco does next, as a director, he'll do something with more class. Number seven, Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas, where Kirk Cameron spends 80 minutes of your time talking to you, lecturing you like I'm doing right now. Who wants to pay to see someone vlog? When they go to the theater, they want to see an adventure, exciting, whether it's from this kind of message about Christmas or someone fighting demons in the world or uh, aliens attacking the world or men and women, men and men, women and women falling in love. We go to the movies to see amazing adventures happen in front of rise whether the subjects about any of those stuff but we don't want to go to the theater and watch someone just talk in front of a camera like i'm doing right now so why would you want to do that why would you want to pay twelve dollars to do that so don't do yourself a favor no do yourself a favor yes do yourself a favor and and uh hopefully this movie will win a bunch of razzies i don't know what i'm talking about the movie was just awful well uh, let's move on number six a haunted house two you know, back in 2000, Marlon Wayans was actually an actor, and he was in a funny comedy, scary movie, and at the same time, in a real movie called Requiem for a Dream, where he let somebody direct him into an amazing performance. And now he's not doing anything important. I'm surprised we haven't even heard Haunted House 3. It's probably coming. But oh, I don't know what he's, why he's making these movies. Money? Yes. What am I saying? Of course, money! That's the money. Okay, everyone. So yeah, I forgot. These movies are so forgettable that I actually forgot to put in my number five. So I have to shoot it later and then edit into this video. Hello again, and then we'll hopefully go back to... <sighs> number five. Let's be cops. You know what? I had a lot of hope for this movie. I like Jack Johnson. And I like the... I think... Um, who else is in this movie? Is it a Wayne's brother? Or weighs and weighing somebody, somebody weighs, someone's weighing in on this movie. I like the concept. I was excited for this movie, and it really let me down. The only thing I actually found funny about this movie was actually in the trailer, and that was they were making fun of this commercial job that the character was doing before they decided to be cops. And then the rest of the movie just went on and on and on and on and on, and never really recovered from there. I hate this movie. It wasn't funny. Sorry. All right, everyone. Back to my video. This is probably where I'm going to get a lot of hate, so I'm just going to keep this short and quick and to the point. Number four, 22 Jump Street. For me, it didn't work the first time. It didn't work the second time. But I will give a third time a 
another chance. I like to be optimistic when I go see a movie because I like Jonah Hill, I like Channing Tatum. I love these directors, but this comedy did not work for me at all. I'm alone on this. I realize that. I'm wrong to a lot of people, and that's perfectly okay. Again, there may be films out there that you hate that I love, and I hate that you love. So everybody's different, and everybody should have an opinion. But I cannot uh, recommend this film at all. I think this movie is just a juvenile, despicable comedy, if you even want to call it a comedy. I didn't laugh at all. I didn't laugh one time in this movie. Number three, A Million Ways to Die in the West. This is just a train wreck. Thank you, Seth MacFarlane. I do think you're talented. I did see you live in concert last summer with John Williams. You sang. You're amazing. You can sing. I like Ted. Sometimes I like Family Guy, but with A Million Ways to Die in the West, you you died a lot. Your comedy died. Westerns died. The cast, the impressive cast that was in the film died. Everybody that was part of this film just died. This is death. And if you want to see death, go check out A Million Ways to Die in the West. Number two, Winter <laughs> Winter's Tale. Oh my gosh, Winter's Tale. Oh, for a while, this was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. But I've seen some more things. Actually, the next film is pretty bad. Winter's Tale uh, could have been so special and so exciting, mixing reality with fantasy, with the great cast, Colin Farrell and Russell Crowe. And then for some reason, Will Smith is a, the devil or some or demon, something in this. And he's living in this like little hole in the wall, and Russell Crowe talks to him. And then there's all this fantasy that never really feels like it gels with reality or any explanation about that. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. What was going on there? It's a, it's a complete mess of a film. And it could have been such an amazing romantic love story. And in the end, it is just WTF, man. There's a lot of W. Especially the Will Smith stuff. I mean, if anybody's seen it with the Will Smith, what, can you explain it to me? What was going on there? What, what was he doing? He was just playing himself. All right, everyone, finally, let's get this over with. I've been wasting your time for about 11 minutes now, and I apologize. Number one is the worst film of the year, and it has one of my favorite actors ever because he's so outrageous and fun. And in this movie, he does absolutely nothing. That would be Left Behind. Yes, Nicolas Cage, for some reason, was in this movie. This is a remake of a, Cam a Kirk Cameron film based on a Christian book series that I've never read, never planned to. And I never really planned on seeing the original films with Kirk Cameron after watching this, of course. Uh, I don't know what was this. The remaining looks like a masterpiece compared to this Christian-based end-of-the-world scenario. Ke uh, uh, um, Nicolas Cage looks uh, like dried paint on a wall. Nothing happens. His performance is so dull. He doesn't care what's going on. He's collecting a paycheck. Not even his wig on his head looks interesting or excited to be there. The rest of the cast is... Uh, just looks like they're reading cue cards. Probably could what you could say what I'm doing right now, reading a cue card. Though there's nothing there. There's nothing here either. Uh, what else? This thing. Uh, uh, just it's just it's sad. You know, I want to recommend more Christian films to the masses, um, and it's just it's really depressing when this is all they offer when it comes to big budget action films. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on with uh, with that community. I don't know why why they're doing that. They could be telling thought-provoking stories that don't preach, but entertain and excite. And with this film, it's just a complete mess. It's ridiculous. It's laughable. It is so bad, it's good. So I say, check out Left Behind. Get some friends together. Come up with sort of weird, weird drinking game, and you'll have the time of your life as you watch this piece of garbage. It's such a mess. Oh, Nicolas Cage, what were you thinking? I Probably money. Cashing in. I think you're, you are a talented guy. You're crazy. You're insane. And that's what we wanted with our actors. We want them to perform and act outrageous. And have... The, 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 just drive in the plane. And he's just like... And that's all he does. I mean, the, that's it. And I don't get it. Why was this? I don't know. Anyways, I've wasted your time enough. Thank you so much for watching. In the comment box below, what did you think of the of the ten, twenty? I can't believe I twenty films I just talked about that are so terrible that I never want to mention ever again. I never want to mention ever again. In the comment box below, let me know where I'm right. Let me know where I'm wrong. 
I'm perfectly okay with everybody's opinion. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate putting 22 Jump Street on there. I'm perfectly okay with that. You, I, I'm shutting up now. Anyways, thank you again so much for watching. 2014 was an amazing year. I saw over 250 movies in the theater and out of those only 20 films were terrible. Isn't that awesome? I mean, there was a lot of me mediocre crap that I'm not talking about at all, but only 20 films that really I hated, I hated. So to me, that's awesome. I'm hoping that's the case and hopefully it'll be less next year, this year, 2015. Anyways, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support, your subscription. Whether you agree with me or not, that's perfectly okay. Everybody, it doesn't matter. I, I just appreciate you checking out. And now it's your, your time to tell me in the comment box below what are the worst movies you saw last year. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Movie Man Chat. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. And please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to We Live Film. Also go to Long Beach Acting and Film Association right here on Facebook and Twitter. Please also go to MoviePile.com and if you enjoyed this video review of 2014 please subscribe right here i'd really appreciate it in the meantime have a great day a wonderful night and a wonderful life and i'll talk to you very soon bye everyone peace be with you